It is a whole new world. Here, your eyes sees in perfect digital detail. This is the SLR world of the Canon Optura digital camcorder, where action is captured at 30 breathtaking video frames per second. Where every digital still is incredibly moving, and where the real action begins long after you finish recording. The Canon Optura digital camcorder, leader of the new world. Yeah, we're going to be looking at this weird thing today. Hey there, welcome back to my camera collection. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Canon Optura. Uh, technically, it's the MV1. We'll be looking at the specs on this camera. Then we'll go around and look at the physical features on it. I'll share a couple of my opinions on it. And at the end of the video, we'll look at some of the test footage that comes out of this guy. With that being said, let's get into today's video. So yes, this is the Canon Optura MV1. So in Europe and Japan, this was just called the Canon MV1. But in America, it's called the Canon Optura, so the Canon Optura MV1. You may notice that it looks very similar to a modern or maybe an early 2000s uh, kind of DSLR looking camera. It's not an actual DSLR. It's not even a picture camera. It is a video camera. It records to mini DV tapes and it was originally released in 1997. This one specifically is from 1999, January January of 1999. And I just gotta say that, man, this thing is a goofy looking camera. This thing is just so weird looking. Not something that I would expect Canon to come out with. Well, actually I kinda would expect Canon to come out with something like this. Because before Canon got into the video, video camera market back in the day, yeah, they did make like VHS style cameras and stuff like that, but they, have always been a SLR kind of company. So they've always made SLR cameras, ones that take pictures onto film and stuff. They look like this, but they take pictures onto like, what, 35 millimeter film? I don't really know anything about pictures, but yeah, <laughs> that's I think what they took pictures on. You can look at a lot of other cameras out there and kind of see the similarities of what I'm talking about. I mean, you got this one, which is the MV1. You have what, the Canon L1, the Canon L2, you have the Canon XL1 and the XL2. All of those cameras have interchangeable lenses like a DSLR does, but they're video cameras. They record either to uh, video eight or high eight or mini DV cameras. But this one doesn't have an inter interchangeable lens. This one kind of reminds me of like a like a power shot where you kind of have like a, like a point and shoot kind of uh, camera, like a digital picture camera, if, if you will. This kind of reminds me of a mixture between like a DSLR and a digital picture camera because you can zoom with it and you can also take pictures and videos with it. It's just kind of a goofy camera. I think they use the same tape deck or motors to eject the tape and all that because when you do eject it and put a tape in and it retracts it. It sounds identical to the Canon GL1 and the GL2, um, similar to like the XL1 as well. So I assume it uses the exact same pieces and motors and stuff like that for the tape deck. Another thing that's very interesting about it is it takes the same exact batteries as a Canon GL1, Canon GL2, and the Canon XL1 and the XL2. The only difference is, is those cameras can take up, you know, big batteries if you want to put them in it. But this one, you can only use the small kind of battery because it goes inside the camera. If you do buy one of these out there, you do got to make sure that you get the small Canon GL1, GL2 style battery because it's the only one that will fit in this camera, but that is good to know that it uses the exact same batteries. So I just thought that was kind of interesting and I, I figured I would share that information with you. So let's look at the specs on this camera. I'm not going to look at all of them, but uh, some of the ones that I find interesting and important. Most of the ones that people want to hear about. All the information I have found on Canon's website, they have like a like a museum area on their website, um, but for some reason the, the price that they post on there is in yen. So converting that to uh, USD, this camera cost about $1,735 when it was brand new. So that's pretty steep for this funky, weird camera. So you can obviously choose between 12-bit and 16-bit audio recording. 
I definitely recommend 16-bit audio recording. It has a third of an inch CCD progressive scan sensor in it that produces about 360,000 pixels. And obviously with these, any kind of tape camcorder, you can use uh, short play or long play. So short play, you'll get better video quality, but you'll have less time on the tape. And if you use long play, you'll get longer time on the tape, but worse video quality. So if you use short play, you'll get 60 minutes on a tape. And if you use long play, you'll get 90 minutes on the tape. And you can choose between manual focus and autofocus. You better be able to for $1,700 back in the day. It has a maximum shutter speed of one in 2000. So not super high, but I guess it gets the job done. The minimum illumination on it is 2.5 lux. So it does okay in low light. Not bad. The viewfinder is a 0.55 inch viewfinder or pretty much a half inch viewfinder. And the viewfinder creates about 113,000 pixels. And it does have a two inch LCD screen. So it's not a 2.5 inch. So it's just a little bit smaller than most cameras out there, but it also creates 113,000 pixels. It's nice to see them uh, keep the, the, the pixels similar on the viewfinder and the screen itself. It does have have a stereo microphone, which pretty much by, you know, 1999, 2000, pretty much most cameras had stereo microphones on them. And that is just some of the interesting specs that I found on Canon's website for this. You can look at other ones on there if you want to, like the tape speed and the, the audio system and all that kind of uh, nitty gritty kind of stuff. But I feel like most people don't really care or really understand a lot of that stuff. Therefore, I don't think really people really look into it. So I don't usually talk about it. So now that we've looked at some of the specs on it, let's go around and look at the physical features on it. Let's start at the lens or the front of the camera like I generally do and then we'll go around it and look at the top and bottom of it and all that so it did come with a lens hood or a lens cap for it put that on the side now it also came with a um, a protective uh, clear filter on the front of it so you don't have to worry about scratching the actual lens of it you can scratch that piece of glass and protect your lens or if a rock hits it whatever it's a secondary little shield for your for your camera but it is a 49 millimeter lens thread diameter on it so any kind of filter or wide angle fisheye you want to use that's the size you need I usually talk about fish eyes because I like filming with fish eye and doing filming skateboarding and all that. Um, but I don't think you can find a 49 millimeter fish eye out there. I think you can find a, a 46 or a 52. I would go with a 52 because um, then you can get step up rings and it's uh, adaptable to this and you'll be able to use it. So I'll leave a link in the description if I can find one um, for a 52 millimeter fish eye that will work with this camcorder. So it has a 14 times optical zoom zoom along with a 35 times digital zoom. So I think that's a, an appropriate amount of digital zoom on there. I'm glad that it's not like 800 times digital zoom because everybody knows that that is useless and pointless because you can't even make out an image to see what you're actually recording. So I, I really don't understand why companies put that big of a digital zoom on there. So 35 is, I think is a, is a good amount of zoom on there. So if 14 doesn't work for you, you can always bump it up to 35 and probably somewhere anywhere in between. Now it does have a stereo microphone here on top where you see all these little kind of holes or dots in the body of the camera. It does have optical image stabilization. So you'll have a nice and not shaky video footage. And from recording with it, even when you're zoomed in, it has pretty good image stabilization in my opinion. A plus on that. I like the image stabilization on this camera. They did a great job with it. You have your power switch here on the left side, kind of an odd spot for it, but built Building a DSLR style camcorder, you kind of got to move things around and create new places and homes for stuff like that. So pushing it to the front of the camera or towards the lens uh, puts it into record mode and pushing it towards the viewfinder or the back of the camera puts it in VCR mode or playback mode. Down along the bottom, you do have your digital 
fader so you can switch between them you know all those cheesy fade in and fade outs you have your manual focus ring so if you push in on it like a button it'll turn manual focus on or off then you can use the wheel to go up and down to adjust the manual focus if you watched my last video with the uh, Sony CCD TR81 I was talking about how the body was kind of uh, sticky um, where the where the, the tape came out when I got this camera the entire body was all sticky because the manufacturer rubberized like the whole body on it this thing was disgusting I it took me forever to clean it all up and there's still a couple little sticky spots here and there um, so I also used rubbing alcohol to clean it up and get rid of all the rubbery stickiness on it and I did rub off just a little bit on the uh, the labels here on the side I can't really read what they say uh, but I do believe that the, the 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 wheel next to the focus wheel is your shutter um, so you can adjust the shutter speed and all that so you can turn the the shutter manually on or off um, you just got to make sure that the camera is not in auto mode. You got to make sure it's in the TV or AV mode. And then in my opinion, I think this is the weirdest thing in this camera and it has a little joystick on the side here. And so that's for accessing the menu. Kind of weird because it spins and so it kind of like messes with your, your finger. You have to almost like pinch it, like grab it and then move it around. So like using it with your thumb, because the joystick spins, your thumb will kind of like slide off of it or push it in a direction you don't want it to go. So it's kind of a weird innovation. I've never seen any other camera with a, uh, a joystick like this on it. It's kind of cool, but doesn't really work all that well. I'll explain what I mean. When you're in the menu, you usually have a wheel that goes up and down and then pushes in like a button. This one's not like that. You can go up and down with the joystick and then you go to select something, you go to the right to select it. But then there's not a way for you to go back in the menu. So you have to hit menu, close the menu, reopen it, and then go to a different section in the menu itself, creating much more of a longer process to go through the menu and adjust things and all that. So I don't know. I, I kind of wish that they had like a, a select button or like a back button or something that uh, worked with the joystick or maybe made the joystick push in like a Xbox controller, if that makes sense. And then you got this big wheel right here and that is all of your program. So you have the AV, the TV. I don't, does anybody know what those actually stand for? I, I've i never been able to figure it out. Even on like modern day, like DSLRs, they have that. And I don't know what, what it stands for. You have an auto mode and a auto mode. I don't know why there's two auto modes. Uh, the A is auto, but also the little green one is auto. Um, I think the green one is auto lock, so you can't adjust anything on it. But then you have a sand and snow, or a sports mode, I guess. And then there is a spotlight mode. And then I believe that's a cinematic mode, so there might be like some fun little filters and stuff like that you can play with um, if you have that selected. But yeah, the AV and the TV mode are the, the two manual modes. Above the power switch, you do have a external mic plug-in. If I can get it open, geez. Wow, that is a pain. And it also has a power source so if you have a powered mic um, some I think like older mics they had two plugins for it one was uh, uh, the mic plug-in was a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and then the power source was a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack and they both plugged in together and then the camera would power the mic so if you have one of those it will definitely work with uh, one, of, one of these cameras it does have a colored viewfinder on it and then on top you'll have this big wheel right here and that is your your focus for your eyesight and then it took me a while to figure out but there is a little compartment right behind the uh, program wheel. And that is your spot for your headphone jack to monitor your audio and your AV out, along with your wired remote in. On the back, you got your battery compartment there. You got this little door that pops open along with your battery release. This little gray button here, you push it in, the battery pops out. Here you have your nickel sized battery, or I think it's what are they, a three volt? They're a three volt battery, I think. Um, that just keeps the internal clock ticking, even if you don't have the camera battery in the camera. And then you have another compartment right next to it, and that is your S-Video out, all by itself over there. It's not even hanging out with the uh, the AV out over here. So, like I said, this is a really weird camera. Um, on the right side of the viewfinder, though, you have this little dial here. You can get a, uh, like a really small flathead screwdriver in there, and you can adjust the brightness of the viewfinder. You got a cold shoe mount up here on top, so you 
you can mount your mic or like a cold shoe handle. Although this thing would probably be pretty lopsided if you had a cold shoe handle on it. So I don't recommend using one of those. But another thing you got is this little door here. There's lots of hidden compartments on this camcorder. And that is all of your playback functions. So all of your rewind, play, fast forward, stop, pause and record. But they also act as your record search, as long as you're in record mode, your timed uh, photo and record button. Then you also have um, where the stop button is, is your image stabilization on or off. It's got the little hand with the little wave on it. Now for the screen, it's really cool because it came with this little screen cover here and it's kind of a shaded one. You can't really see through it that well, but it protects the screen because like with uh, a lot of DSLRs or even camcorders, you know, you can close the screen into the camera so the back of the screen is uh, facing outwards. Well, this one you can't flip around so the screen is exposed to all the elements and stuff. So it does flip up like this and it does swivel pretty well. And then behind it, you can uh, adjust the brightness on it as well. There's this little box or a tab that pops out and you can adjust the brightness on the LCD screen as well. On the right side of the LCD screen, you can switch back and forth between the LCD screen and the viewfinder. So you push it and the, let's say you have the screen on, you push it and it'll turn the screen off and it'll turn the viewfinder on. And then you can push it again, it'll turn the viewfinder off and it'll turn the screen on. So you can switch back and forth. And then you also have your menu button to get into the menu. And then you use obviously the joystick to get around and select things in the menu. Right here, you do have your fire wire out. Uh, again, another weird random spot for a plug-in. You gotta put them where you, can, uh, where you can put them, you know? Here is your switch. You can switch it, open up the tape deck, and the camcorder will eject the tape. And there you go, there is your mini DV tape. This thing seriously sounds just like a Canon GL1. That is just mind blowing to me. Not mind blowing, but it's just like, it's kind of weird because I've used the Canon GL1 for so long that I've heard the, the tape deck so much that it's like, when I hear that, I'm like, what? Where, where's my Canon GL1? <laughs> so on the front, this is where it actually really screens DSLR or SLR picture camera to me. So you do have your zoom up here. Um, it reminds me a digital picture camera where you can uh, go left and right with it to zoom in and out. It works okay. Um, it's just kind of weird because I'm used to using these fingers instead of just one and going in and out like this. But then you have your record button up here. But what's really weird about the record button is it acts like a picture camera. So let's say if you've used the DSLR, the picture button, it has kind of like a two-step uh, button on it. So you can push it halfway on like a DSLR and it'll kind of focus in on the image and then you push it down all the way and it'll take the picture. Well, this is the same thing with the record button on here. Um, but when you record, you have to push it down all the way for it to start recording. You have this switch up here, which is like your uh, your lock and standby switch, but instead of that, it goes from lock on the right side, movie in the middle, and then photo on the left side. So this doesn't take any kind of SD cards. It takes pictures to the mini DV tapes. So you can switch it to photo mode, and then that's where that kind of uh, process starts. You, can, uh, you have that two-step picture taking process for the record button and it's also to take pictures with if I explain that very well <laughs> at all and then one last thing I forgot to mention is it has your infrared receiver here on top right in front of the cold shoe mount or the 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 mic system here so if you do have a, a wired remote you can use that to take pictures and start recording and all that yeah pretty much other than that that is uh that's like all the physical features on it there's not a lot on it. There's not a lot of room to really put stuff on here. So obviously some of the things that the camera can do, you can go into the menu and adjust some things here and there. So I'll give you a couple of my opinions on this camcorder. So like I've said before, it does have a really odd shaped body for it, for it to be a camcorder. I feel like most people would look at this who aren't into retro camcorders and be like, oh, that's just a crappy uh, DSLR, SLR camcorder from back in the early 2000s. And it does look like that. It looks like one of those real cheesy ones that you would go to the thrift store and find. And it, 
has like one of those real cheap lenses on it, but no, it's a Canon uh, video camera that records to mini DV tape. But because of its shape, um, you obviously, you don't have a hand strap to slide your hand into to hold it and start, you know, recording and all that. So when I'm recording with it, I always kind of feel like I'm gonna drop it because it is kind of heavy, honestly. I mean, you get the tape in there, not that tapes weigh anything, but you know, that does add like a little tiny bit of weight to it, but then you have the battery, but the whole thing is just kind of heavy. So if you don't have like a lanyard on it and you don't have it around your neck, I just weirdly feel like I'm gonna drop it and break it. Now I would think with one of these cameras, uh, it would either have a viewfinder or a LCD screen and not both, or it wouldn't have a art articulating screen on it. You would think that it would just have like a, a built-in screen that doesn't move. Like a lot of uh, cheap or budget Canon cameras, like the, I used to have a Canon T5 and it has just the screen built into the back of it and it doesn't pop out and swivel and all that. So you would think that it would have something like that, but the fact that it actually has, uh, you know, a screen that tilts up and down along with uh, a colored viewfinder and all that really makes it work a lot better because if you can't see the screen outside at least you can switch over to the viewfinder and record looking through it as well now back to the uh weird joystick when i said that it was it kind of just doesn't work very well since it kind of is it is angled out you can kind of see that there's these little divots uh, on the top bottom left and right and so that's obviously to show you like okay up down left right to go around in the menu well, when you're holding it and you just kind of push up on it, it goes, I don't know, it, it, it's hard to push it in the right position to make it go up and down most of the time for me. I kind of make it go at an angle because when you're just holding it and you're looking at the screen or something, you're pushing it and it feels like you're just going up with it, but really it's going up at like, I don't know, what, 11 o'clock, 10, 10, 30 o'clock, <laughs> if that makes sense. So. It doesn't recognize that you're you're going up or down um, so you have to really kind of it feels like you're pushing it at like two o'clock to make it uh, go up and down or to go up and then what seven o'clock to go to go down and that's just because the the joystick is angled out a little bit so uh, maybe it's just something I got to get used to but it, to me it just makes it more of a hassle I guess I don't know it's annoying to me. And then the fact that there's no back button or anything. So you go up and down and then you go to the right to select things. And then talking about the rubberization again. So obviously it's, it, it, the body of it's plastic. A lot of cameras, and I think even modern like camcorders and uh, video cameras, DSLRs and all that uh, will sometimes have like, it kind of feels rubbery, but it's just this coating that they put over the plastic to kind of give you a little bit more grip. Well, I mean, this camera is 20, four years old and it has started to decay on that rubbery stuff because I, I think either they spray it on or roll it on or something. I don't really know how they do it. It gets warm or it gets cold and then, you know, it cools off, gets warm, cools off, gets warm. And over the time, over the course of its life, it just starts to get gooey and gummy. And oh my gosh, this camera was disgusting. I mean, I'll show you some pictures of the cotton swabs and stuff that I used to clean this thing and it was just disgusting. So now that I've cleaned it, man, this thing is in great shape. This thing works awesome. There's a couple little spots here and there that still kind of feel a little bit sticky, but I did the best that I could um, and also tried to preserve all the, the labels and stuff around the camera so I didn't rub it all off. So yeah, those are just kind of some of my opinions on it. Great camera cool thing to collect because I feel like they're kind of rare. Yeah, if you want this camera, I'll have it listed up on my eBay store for you to snag if you want it. If you have one of these for yourself already, I'll leave a link to batteries, chargers, mini DV tapes, um, a fisheye like I said before. ClearClick has finally restocked on their ClearClick video to digital 3.0, so I'll have those listed down below as well, along with the 2.0 if you don't wanna spend the money to get the 3.0, and any other kind of accessory that I can find that will work great with this camcorder. So, with all that being said, let's check out some of the video footage that comes out of this guy, shall we?
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old, weird retro camcorders pretty much on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.